Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now for today's video, I just thought it would be fun to have a little chat about trends because we are very fast approaching the summer season. We're not far off now. We are heavily embedded in spring. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. It's a glorious time, let's face it. And there are lots and lots of trends which are about this season, as there are every season. So I have got five trends to discuss with you guys today. They may not be official trends, you know, as said by Vogue or whoever, what fashion powers that be, but they are five trends which I have noticed are very much of the moment. Okay. Trend number one, and I feel like there's going to be a massive divide with you guys over this one, and it is 90s, the 90s era. Now, if I'm being honest, the 90s was one of my favourite decades for fashion. I was born in 85, so the 90s for me was probably where I started to discover fashion. You know, it was through later childhood and early teens, and it's where I probably started to think about buying clothes and looking nice and all that kind of jazz. So for me, the 90s were a pivotal moment in my style history. And over the last few seasons and even the last few years, we've seen a few references from the 90s pop up. We've seen beauty trends, like the whole darker lip liner situation with the nude lip, that's come back. We've seen those little elastic tattoo chokers and velvet chokers, they've come back. Cycle shorts, which FYI is, is a trend in itself, which unfortunately I just don't feel like I can pull off. I've seen so many girls that have worn the cycle shorts trend and they look so good. They just look cool AF. Unfortunately, I don't feel like I can pull that off. And that's the one sort of takeaway point that I would mention about trends. You don't have to say, I would never wear a trend. I would never wear this. The thing is with trends, you have to feel comfortable and confident. That is always my main message to myself. If there's a trend and maybe I really like it, but I don't feel comfortable or confident in it, then it's not really worth going any further with and taking it into my wardrobe. Because if I just don't feel, you know, right, or if I feel a bit awkward, nah. But the elements of 90s fashion that really float my boat are oversized and sort of masculine blazers, really basic white t-shirt or a white button-up shirt, high-waisted straight leg jeans, all of these little elements from the 90s, which I loved back in the 90s, I still love now. And there are a few style icons from that era who I really take a lot of inspiration from. So we've got Julia Roberts in the 90s. She was nailing it. There's one scene right at the end of Pretty Woman. I'm sure you guys will know what I'm talking about. She has high-waisted, long straight leg jeans on. She has a white button up shirt, or I think it might be a white t-shirt and then she has a black blazer. I have worn that outfit countless times. And I remember the first time I watched Pretty Woman and I saw her in that outfit, I was like, oh! she looks so good. And it's just a very basic outfit, yet so effective. Now, one of the pros about 90s fashion is that it's really easy to get this look sustainably because the 90s is now also classed as vintage. So you can vintage shop the heck out of the 90s era. So with blazers, this is a really good tip as well. If you're looking for a vintage blazer, try looking at men's vintage blazers because you're going to get that 90s fit it's all about the boxy shoulders oversized you can roll up the sleeves in fact I saw a picture the other day and I actually saved this to my Pinterest and it was a picture of Matthew Perry and Matt LeBlanc from Friends and Matthew Perry was wearing an outfit with like an oversized blazer obviously it's from the 90s 
In fact, the entire cast of Friends are very much 90s style icons. It's not just Rachel Green, it's Chandler as well. And there was this picture of the two of them and I was like, oh my God, that outfit is amazing. Like his entire outfit, the color scheme and everything, I love it. So he is definitely one of my style icons. And again, it goes to show the masculine size fitting of blazer. You might have to do your research with sizes and maybe it might be easier buying that kind of vintage item within a vintage shop or a charity shop rather than online because you can't really try on and gauge for size but vintage is definitely the way to go with the 90s trend we're talking vintage levi's 501s which you guys know i love and i wear them all the time they are such a 90s fit then you can just mix in your basic t-shirts and a basic button-up shirt again you can do menswear for button-up shirts because they have that more slouchy oversized fit and then add in that masculine blazer now when it comes to footwear to tie in this outfit we're talking mules so I actually have a pair here these are new but again you could definitely shop vintage but this just goes to show how the 90s trend is really starting to filter into all of our favorite high street stores as well these are by and other stories they are so 90s there's a brand at the moment which is becoming quite a cult brand they're called by far you guys have probably seen them all over Instagram they are making such 90s accessories you would not believe so yes mules are another absolute hit for the 90s trend and tied in with that oversized masculine look they just add a little bit of a feminine touch okay moving on to trend number two and it is dad sandals aka mandals now I think I referenced this trend in Tuesday's vlog and I think that's where I showed you guys these because I've only just recently bought these. I did try finding a pair of these um, on eBay pre-owned but unfortunately I couldn't find my size anywhere so I did buy them brand new from ASOS but I think they're going to be a good purchase. They're one of them things you can whip out year after year so I think it's £50 well spent and I should get a decent amount of wear out of these. These are a Marmite shoe. They're also an ugly shoe or man repelling shoe. And the reason these are called dad sandals is because dads across the globe wear these. They often wear them with socks. Uh, they're also called tourist sandals because they are a popular shoe choice of tourists and rightly so because they are so comfortable. This is where comfort really prevails over <laughs> a pleasing aesthetic. Now I'm showing you guys these, these are my Tevas, I think it's called Teva, it's Teva or Teva, I don't really know. Um, I'm going to call them Tevers just for argument's sake, but there are lots of big designer brands, Chanel and Prada being the main two, that have come out with probably slightly nicer, more feminine looking um, dad sandals. And they have essentially just sparked this massive trend now, which is making dads globally feel very smug that they are finally included in the fashion world. <laughs> so if your dad is a Teva wearer, let him have his moment. Now I know, <laughs> as I mentioned, that they're not the most aesthetically pleasing shoe. And as I've just said, there are nicer looking ones out on the high street. You've got some which have got padding, some which are leather. In fact, Teva even themselves have a few different styles. They have some leather ones which might be more up your street. Um, we've got ones in snake skin coming out. We've got things with studs, with gems you name it, there are all different kinds of sandals. Now I know lots of you guys will be wondering what outfit or how do you wear these sandals and make them look cool? And I think it's all about confidence and again being comfortable. You have to feel that when you're wearing a trend. So earlier this week I wore an outfit with these sandals and I wore them with a black oversized blazer, stripy vest and some straight leg sort of frayed hem jeans. I felt comfortable, I felt confident, my feet felt comfortable and I was able to do loads of walking. I think the thing with these shoes is to keep an outfit simple. These are not going to go with some really fussy outfit. I think this is a case of jeans, 
t-shirt, add a blazer if it's chilly or a denim jacket. You know, it's those kind of really simplistic outfits that work with this style of shoe. They also work really well with summer dresses and we're talking sort of longer, more minimalistic summer dresses. If you've got a mini dress, that could also work, but just keep it very, very simple. Now, trend number three. You will not believe how long I have waited for this to become a trend. It's a colour. It's one of the biggest colours of the season. It is beige. <laughs> I love beige. Beige is my jam. I just get so much happiness from beige in so many forms. I love my beige food. I love beige clothes, beige shoes, beige accessories, beige interiors. I just love beige. It is my favourite thing in life. Now it doesn't have to be head to toe beige if you're feeling super neutral then of course by all means. Beige kind of falls under like a neutral category so you can kind of mix in different tones of beige and you can create a monochromatic outfit which isn't necessarily all just one shade of beige so you end up looking like a loaf of bread. That's not what we're talking about. You can mix it up, you can add in some colour in there and maybe you just wanted to do some sort of beige accessories. So these shoes I've had for a couple of years now, they were from Mango. These I have whipped out firmly for this season. I've worn them a couple of times already. Really comfortable. If anyone wants a similar version to these, Everlane actually do them. I'll leave a link for them down below in the description box. Um, alternatively, you could try the Mango Outlet site. They might still have this exact style of shoe. And also you could try eBay to see if anyone has them secondhand or Depop. Um, and then these would also fall under the realm of beige. This is a little adding a bit of texture and a bit of animal print, a little snakeskin loafer. These are from June. These are actually a really good uh, Gucci Jordan dupe and they're really comfortable, a nice little flat style. So potentially these could be a nice little beige addition for a workwear wardrobe or even teamed with some chinos or trench coat or even basic jeans and t-shirt. These will add, I was going to say an injection of beige. That actually sounds glorious, doesn't it? These will add an injection of beige into your look. Right, trend number four. Now I'm really excited about this trend because I feel like it's gonna get people excited and it's maybe gonna get the younger generation and even the older generation more into sustainability and vintage shopping. The trend is vintage bags. Now, a little caveat to this, it doesn't necessarily have to be designer vintage bags, which I know I have like a lot of Chanel and Fendi up here. It's not necessarily designer bags. It can be vintage bags that are, you know, fiver from a car boot sale. In fact, a fiver is probably quite expensive for a car boot sale, a pound from a car boot sale. Anything that is vintage. Now, there is a predominant era within this realm of vintage bags that is quite popular, and that's touching on trend number one, which is the 90s. So up here, I do believe every single one of those vintage bags is from the 90s. Now, the Fendi baguette, which is this one, mine is actually the Fendi baguette mama, so it's the slightly larger size. This was made famous from Sex in the City. It was Carrie's bag of choice. And this has become a really popular bag for people to start buying. And the good thing about vintage bags is that they cost a fraction of the price of new designer bags. So get yourselves on Vestiaire and any other sort of secondhand sites, get yourselves into those charity shops, into the vintage shops, and get your hands on some vintage bags. Again, if budget won't allow you to buy something like this, this I picked up for, I think it was about 250 pounds, including shipping and all the costs and things, which I think is pretty good. I've worn this loads. It was in really good condition and a lot of vintage bags 
bags which are sort of coming back around for another time now are made out of this canvas which is actually really hard wearing so a lot of the time you'll find that most of these bags are in really really good condition but yes if your budget won't quite allow you to stretch to a designer vintage bag get yourselves down to the car boot sales the flea markets any of those little charity shops or vintage shops there are some really good ones in London we're talking Camden East there's even some in West, although those are a little bit pricier, obviously. And even if you're heading to Paris or some of the European cities, you have excellent vintage shopping. So get yourself in there, you'll get a bargain, you'll be on trend and doing your bit to save the environment because sustainability and saving the planet is cool. Right, on to my fifth and final trend. And I've kind of already touched on these already because they are, again, another nod to the 90s. And it is the barely there and strappy sandal. Now, fortunately, for those of you that absolutely hate heels, the heel height seems to be coming down sort of every season. The heel is getting lower and lower and lower. So the trend really is to have a slightly lower to mid heel which I personally think is easier to walk in, it's more comfortable and I actually think they look a little bit more chic. So this is a huge trend for this season, it's kind of started to filter in over the last few seasons but this season it's hitting big. Now I've previously mentioned that new cult brand by far, I think they have been one of the leaders in this trend, they have created some of the most beautiful shoes, mules, strappy sandals, all in this kind of element. But then we have the high street as well, these are from Topshop, these are the strippy heels, they come in two colours, you guys will know if you saw the vlog where I featured these. I bought both colours because I just love them so much. They've got this 90 square toe, really manageable, I would say mid heel, this sort of unusual angular detail here. I have another pair over here on my shelving unit, those are from Mango. They have a slightly lower heel and they have more of a thong strap that goes in between your toes. But there's also sustainable brand reformation. If you wanted to be a little bit more eco-friendly with working in this trend into your wardrobe, they have just launched their own line of shoes. They're amazing. They are made of leather, however, they do have their reasons for that. They've looked into it and at the moment that is the most sustainable fabric for them to use, which I know there's a bit of to and fro debate on that, but they are beautiful shoes and they are the sort of shoes which you would have for years and years. And I know I'm saying that the 90s is very much a trend, but actually something like this is really classic. It works equally as well for evening as it would with, as I said earlier, with reference to the 90s trend, that jeans, t-shirt, blazer and a pair of strappy sandals outfit. Right guys, that is it for this. I suppose it was like a little trend talk, wasn't it? If there's any of those trends that do float your boat, let me know down in the comment section below. Any of those trends that you literally cannot stand, again, let me know in the comment section below and we'll all have a little trend chat. Now, thank you very, no, trend chat. But now it, but now. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. No. <laughs> I'm having a great time. But now it is time for me to bid you all farewell. Thank you very much for spending some of your Sunday with me today or whatever day it may be that you are watching this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one, which I believe is going to be Tuesday and it will be another vlog. So I'll see you there.